All right, here's our last hurrah with turbine engines and airflow systems. Right now we're going to look at exhaust reversers and noise suppression. So, reversers, first of all, again, we're going to take a look at a familiar picture, our airflow through the engine. Now, we've been talking a lot about this being broken into our primary airflow stream going through the core of the engine, and then our secondary airflow stream, which is going around through the fan duct. Now, another way that we can talk about this, uh, for instance, when we talk about reversers, is this hot and cold stream. Obviously, hot stream is going to be flowing out of the primary airstream. Our cold stream, meaning it's not seeing any combustion, is flowing through our fan system or secondary airflow stream. So hot and cold are the two ways we want to look at this. As we break this down, let's see what this looks like with a reversing system. What you see before you is an example of a clamshell reverser. This is what we consider a mechanical blockage reverser, and this is going to affect exclusively the hot air stream. So this would be considered a hot stream reverser. So what we have are hot exhaust gases that are normally flowing through the exhaust nozzle. However, when we switch to thrust reverse, these two clamshells are going to open up and are going to block our airflow going aft. So all of that thrust is going to be redirected forward and we're going to get reverse thrust. With most thrust reverse systems, we're going to have a diminished capability for reverse thrust as compared to forward thrust. Basically, we aren't going to be able to produce as much reverse thrust as we do thrust in the forward direction. And that's fine because we don't need to. The aircraft can only take so much stress to begin with. But this is a very basic system. Most hydraulic systems, uh, pneumatic systems, electric systems are used in conjunction to deploy systems like this. We have a number of controllers, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that are going to deploy our thrust reversers, and these are actuated from the cockpit. So, in normal conditions, the uh, thrust levers are going to be brought down to flight idle, and then the reversed le the reverse levers, which are on the thrust levers, are going to be pulled up and brought up to maximum thrust, so the thrust reversers will deploy, and the engines will spool up a little bit to increase the effect of that forward thrust. Now, again, these are streamlined when they're not deployed, and uh, they exit streamlined when they are deployed. Uh, an important thing to note, though, from a mechanical standpoint, if you're performing maintenance on the thrust reverser and the thrust reverser is deployed or undeployed, whatever it is, the system needs to be safety and locked out. Uh, these come out with some force. Like I mentioned, they can be run by a number of different systems. It could be pneumatic, uh, they could be hydraulic, which would be uh, potentially dangerous, or they could be electronically actuated using uh, flex drives, jack screws, you name it. Either way, if you happen to be in the way of these clamshell doors as they close, you are not nearly as strong as the thrust that would be exiting the engine. So if they are not safety and someone accidentally deploys or undeploys those thrust reversers, you could be in for a very, very bad day. So keep that in mind from a maintenance perspective. But having taken a look at hot stream reversing, let's take a look at a mixed system with a high bypass turbofan. So in this case, we're using two different sections to accomplish thrust reverse. We still have our mechanical blockage doors here at the core of the engine from our primary airstream, but we also have blocker doors up here in our secondary airstream, or the cold stream. Now, in this case, this is what we can call, would consider a cascade vane reversing system. So what we have is a translating cowl that moves aft and exposes these cascade vanes that are angled forward. These blocker doors deploy as a result of the translating cowl moving aft, and that forces airflow back forward through these cascade vanes in a forward direction, producing our thrust reverse. And at the same time, the core engine is going to deploy its own blocker doors, and we have cascade vanes that will send it out in a forward direction. That's it. It's relatively simple. There's a lot that we could talk about with different controlling systems, but those are going to be much more aircraft specific. But these are your two primary ways. And keep in mind, when we deal with a turbojet that has no bypass, we're going to be using mechanical blockage to accomplish thrust reverse. However, when we're using a turbofan engine, we're going to use a combination of hot and cold stream uh, reversing techniques, uh, blo mechanical blocking doors, and cascade vanes, which are a part of aerodynamic braking. Next up, we'll talk a little bit about noise suppression. Now again, I've mentioned this before, but there's been a strange epidemic of people moving next to air, uh, airports, buying houses, and then being very surprised and angry at the amount of noise that they hear from the airport. Go figure. As a result, we've taken means to try to suppress or change the amount of noise 
that uh, comes from a jet engine. Now this is accomplished in a couple different ways. Uh, we have to think about what noise actually is and ultimately noise from a jet engine is not going to come from the core of the engine itself. Instead it's going to come from the airstream that it produces. So as we have very high velocity supersonic air that hits static airflow around the engine it's going to create a lot of turbulence and that's where most of our noise comes from a jet engine. It's all happening through the exhaust. So as a result, we can suppress the amount of noise being created by augmenting how much turbulence is created and augmenting the size of the exhaust stream. Two examples, we have this corrugated perimeter uh, tail cone over here or this multi-pipe tail cone over here. All that's going to do, uh, particularly with turbojet engines, is by suppressing noise by means of changing the frequency or the noise pattern of air that's exiting the nozzle. So if we break this down into smaller air streams, then we can affect change the frequency of noise that's exiting from the engine. So we can try to augment that to something that's outside the range of humor, uh, human hearing, or we can change it to frequencies, you know, mid or higher frequencies that don't travel as far as lower frequency noise. On the other hand, when we're dealing with uh, turbofan engines, they tend to be a whole lot quieter because, again, we do not have that volume of thrust and the same velocity of thrust that's exiting the tail cone. It's all mostly coming off the uh, fan airflow, or that secondary airflow, to produce thrust. So they're quieter by nature. We can also incorporate uh, noise dampening linings in the cowl systems to try to reduce engine noise further, and uh, it'll take any noise or vibration and just convert it into heat, which helps to dissipate that. And you'll also see flight practices change around airports. So if you've been on a commercial airliner recently, you've probably noticed that the throttles are full for takeoff and the initial climb out. And as soon as they establish a, uh, a slower climb rate and bring the gear in, you'll hear them throttle back the engines a little bit uh, for noise suppression over residential areas. So uh, through a combination of mechanical means and different flight operations, we can bring noise down to an acceptable level for people who are very frustrated hearing airplanes fly overhead. I, I can't imagine why that would be the case. Oh well.